the PBA Tour enters its final event before the holiday break. Young and old alike have rolled through the exempt field, winning titles and trophies along the way. Winter's cold has not stopped the bowling on tour from being hot. From Hall of Famers to youngsters, everybody looking for a little holiday magic to get to the winner's circle. With holiday wishes abound, we'll find out what gifts await in the great state of New York. Coming your way next. That's right! From AMF Babylon Lanes in West Babylon, Long Island, New York, it's the Columbia 300 Classic. ESPN wraps up live coverage of the first half of the 06-07 Denny's PBA Tour season. Here is the five-man step ladder bracket. Local hero Michael Fagan looking for his first title and 24-time winner Norm Duco head-to-head -head in the first match. The winner climbs the ladder to meet Joe Ciccone of Buffalo searching for his first PBA crown. Tommy DeLuce Jr. awaits the winner of that as the two-seed overcoming a serious injury to return to TV. And Ryan Schaefer is the king of the hill. He is the top seed. Hello, bowling fans. Welcome to Long Island. Glad you could join us today, and happy holidays to everyone. Dave Ryan, Chris Barnes alongside, along with Randy Peterson. Chris, gl uh, glad to have you back on the show after a couple weeks off. Well, it's good to be back. I didn't bow very well this week, so it's uh, 90 minutes in the sin bin for me. 90-minute penalty. <laughs> We're glad to have Chris on the show today. Randy, PBA history made today for the first time ever. Four bowlers from New York State make one show. Well, as the great Billy Joel once sang, we're in a New York state of mind. Starting with Ryan Schaefer from upstate New York, Elmira. Tommy Deluce Jr., just down the road about 30 minutes from Queens. Joe Ciccone, another upstater. And Michael Fagan, who actually grew up in this area, bowled a lot in this bowling center as a kid. But let's not forget the future PBA Hall of Famer, Norm Duke. So, Chris, our top seed is Ryan Schaefer. It's no easy matter, as you know from personal experience, step ladder format the last two years. The top seed is 0-8. Yeah, the top seeds have struggled. Uh, Ryan's going to have to uh, be on the bench for 70 minutes. He's going to wait. Momentum will be all, all against him. He'll have to rely on his voodoo roll this week if he's going to get it started and, and take the title today. And, Randy, you talk about an inspirational story. It's got to be Tommy DeLutz Jr., career-threatening injury with his wrist. He's back on TV today. Without question, the toughest thing for any athlete to endure is, is trying to come back from an injury. I can relate after having knee surgery in 1991. For Tommy DeLutz, he shredded the tendon in his right wrist. He was a top 10 player before his injury. Now, two and a half years later, he says he's fully recovered, and the proof is in the pudding. Five top 10 finishes in a row for Tommy D. Randy, we're on the shark pattern, longest, hardest pattern of the non-majors, the five PBA Tour pattern. Now, earlier, Randy and Chris got together to break down the shark pattern. Traditionally, the shark pattern has favored the power players because of all the oil on the outside part of the lane, Chris, that forces the guys to play the middle. And if you're going to play that deep inside line, you better have a lot of power. And along with that this week, the guys used lengthier drillings, higher response bowling balls, slow speed, and a lot of tilt. I'm gonna show you how they did it. Great shot, Chris. And I'll tell you what, it's no big surprise that Ryan Schaefer led this tournament because he's got all of those ingredients you just spoke about, plus he loves to play the middle part of the lane. But the one thing that the players have showed us this week is that there may be more than one way to catch a shark. Well, that's right. Right of eight at the break point is out of bounds, but if you can get it going right to left at them from outside, you can play out there too. Guys do it with either very low rev rates or they do it with no tilt at all to keep it online. We'll show you how they did it. Norm made his big move in round three, playing right there, and I think his best chance to go up through four matches and win title number 25 is if he can find a look from there. And if that goes away, Chris, look for the very versatile Norm Duke to jump to the middle part of the lane and join the feeding frenzy with the other big power players. All right, fellas, great breakdown of the shark pattern. How about some shark tails for you? Low scores all the way through, just three. 300 games, including Rudy Casamascus, who had a very nice start to this tournament, was the leader early on, but did not qualify for the show. We will see how the scores break down as the lanes break down. And for the first time ever on TV, 
Michael Fagan from right here on Long Island will go head to head with a legend. Norm Duke who's won 24 Denny's PBA Tour titles. With Kathy and Ralph making the quick commute. About a 20 minute drive or so from Green Lawn south to here in West Babylon on the island. And they watch their son get some help on the 10 as it goes down late. Good start, That's Michael Fagan. Chris, you hit the nail right on the head when we were talking about this pattern. One thing that Michael Fagan is not lacking is power. How does he create all of, all of the revolutions and all of that hook? Well, he's got the most unique role on tour. His, his access point's only about three and a half inches. Most of us are around five, five and a half inches. Uh, it, it's a very low track, but he covers a large circumference, and his rev rate's up around 500 RPMs. There's Norm Duke. Good start for the Floridian, who is Randy's neighbor, along with Jason Couch all from Claremont, Florida, near Orlando. Randy, break down the matchup, ace hardware matchup today. Well, on paper, this is a David versus Goliath matchup. Norm being the Goliath? Well, in the bowling world he is, but take this into consideration. Michael Fagan's looking for his first title ever. And remember that Norm had to beat Earl Anthony for his first ever title. That came back in 1983. Norm was the youngest ever, still the youngest ever, at 18 years old in Cleveland to win a tour title. Ten pin for Norm. Now Chris want to break down the X's and O's early. Norm using the high friction surface ball in practice to try to carve his path to the pocket. He's going from the outside, isn't he? Yeah, like we talked about in, in the open, it, Norm played out, and when he had a lookout, he had something no one else had. He used that high friction ball in practice, the 360 grid on it, used it for about 15 minutes. I'm not sure he got it all the way where he wanted to, but he got it close enough to be able to use the same ball. He will stay perfect. Single pin conversion numbers this week. Norm, a tremendous season last year. We talked about leading the tour in TV appearances, but only winning the one show. He made seven shows last year. As he's told us already, he's one for one. After a victory in Hammond, Indiana, it's already a better season for him. Not a pure one three pocket hit there for Fagan in his second frame. And the key for men is you have to watch your ball speed. You get too firm, which is easy to do with a really high backswing. I don't care what your rev rate's like. This is what happens. The ball goes right through the break point. And luckily for Michael Fagan, he leaves the 4-8. Could have been worse for him. Two, two. Whoa, he chops the eight pin. He hoped for two. You heard him shout it. And an open frame for the 26-year-old from right here on Long Island. Chris, do you think it's harder to chop this spare than it is to make it? <laughs> no, I'm not sure it is, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you saw it a lot this week for whatever reason. Uh, the lanes are so slick that even going left to right uh, or right to left, the ball would back up, and it wasn't that hard to chop them off here. The hometown fans cheering. A little early, a little early, all right? Wait for me to throw it, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he gets a strike, and Michael is one of the Funnier guys on tour. He's got a lot of personality and <laughs> make sure that the fan a little uh, over exuberant there and trying to cheer Michael before he actually released the ball. It's like a little local action match right there. You got the, the guy in the back with a little money on the other side. Yeah. Well, it's a big day for Michael. He's been bowling since he was six years old, grew up bowling on these lanes, worked in the pro shop right here in Babylon. He knows the center very well. Back to Norm Duke. Frozen theater rope right at the one three. <laughs> Randy, what's Norm got to do to win today? Well, he's got to make shots like that all day and then hope that that reaction doesn't go away. Because if it does, he's got to jump in with the guys that hook the ball. Even though Norm can, that's their A game. That's what they do best. I think what Norm, what Norm does best is what he's doing right now. And I think it's apparent because nobody else is out there doing it. Hammond, Indiana this year. Looking good. Norm Duke. His 17th straight year, he's made multiple TV appearances. He's going to go to the equipment bag here, guys. The leader in that category, Walter A. William Jr., who's got 21 straight years of multi 
television appearances. And Norm fifth in rankings coming into this show. He's had another fine season, leading the tour in average more than 229. Now Fagan tries to rebound after the open frame. Again, not in the pocket, Chris, two pin. Yeah, the ball just keeps getting right of the three pin on that right lane. It's pushing. You can see it start to pick up in the middle lane. And then as it gets partway down, it looks like it accelerates one more time before it hooks. You can watch by his reaction. He knew he knew he needed help from the very beginning there. Chris, is that a Sarge Easter grip that Michael's using? Yeah, that's and what and they and call it. Explain it. Well, the best I understand it is, is basically your ring finger is a full conventional grip, and your middle finger is still a, a fingertip grip. And it's supposed to cut down rev rate a little bit. Does it change the direction of the rotation, or does it just reduce revs? I think guys have used it both ways. Uh, I think Robert Smith used it to try and lower his rev rate. I think Michael has used it more to try and change his tilt. Great look from our crew. Grip there for Michael Fagan. Perfect. Ball in the one three pocket. Boy, right on the screws there. He is down, though, by 22 pins after the open frame early the match. Second frame for him, and Norm Duke goes for the turkey here in his fifth frame. Norm is used to putting away opponents when the door is open, and it certainly has been early by Michael Fagan. Fagan, the five seed. Norm Duke, number four, step ladder format. Right now, Norm Duke's got that, let's stick with the shark pattern theme. He's got that Jimmy Buffett head, or Jimmy Buffett song going through oh, his head. Know. The one that's called Fins. <laughs> There's Fins to the left, Fins to the right, and this is the only game in town. And right now, he's the only, only one swimming out towards that far right portion of the lane and piping it to the 1-3. Really interested by Norm's strategy. The only guy playing from out here. So far, it's paying off. But of course, the lanes will break down. They will transition. TV lights affect the oil more than anything on the big show. Got a break there, Chris, just the seven pins. Yeah, the one thing Norm had to do different today than he had during the week is he took this ball, which is where he played from out, and he had to put a little surface on it. But what it does also is it makes it flatter down lane. And as the lanes transition, if he has to move in, he may lose his carry a little bit quicker than he would have normally. What he's doing what he needs to do, though, is, and that's keeping the ball into the one-three pocket and staying ahead of his opponent in this match. Michael Fagan has failed to double yet, and he's got that open frame in the second. And Norm with a nice lead. He stays clean. Seven pin for the spare. Norm Duke, Michael Fagan head-to-head. -head first match, the step ladder trying to get to the top seed, Ryan Schaefer, and win the Columbia 300 Classic on the island. The Columbia 300 Classic is brought to you by Columbia 300, the official PBA supplier of high-performance bowling balls. Columbia bowls the world over. By Denny's. Denny's always works. By the United States Bowling Congress, ensuring the integrity and protecting the future of the sport of bowling. Bowl with us. And by Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA. For the lowest price of any national chain, go to motel6.com. <laughs> Happy holidays to everyone from all of us at ESPN and the Denny's PBA Tour. It's the Columbia 300 Classic. Be sure to log on to including all the nomination forms for the inaugural Denny's All-American High School Championships. This tournament will be held in conjunction with the Denny's World Championship in Grand Rapids, Michigan, March 24th and 25th, and will crown the nation's top male and female high school bowlers. $10,000 of scholarship money on the line, and the finals of the event will air April 22nd here on ESPN. Nomination forms are due by January 15th, so log on today PBA.com. Michael Fagan, guys, down by 31 pins on essentially his home lanes. Worked in the pro shop here as a teenager when he was 16. He's competed here many times, junior tournaments, regional tournaments. He's in a hole for the great Norm Duke. Like that one, though, Chris, all the way. Yeah, he liked that one much more from the very beginning, and his angles are just tighter. He's 
Ball's closer to the head pin all the way through the lane and gives it a chance to make the corner down lane. It also looked like he used a little fagonomics the last two shots where he wasn't afraid to get on it at the bottom of the swing and make his ball hook. Fagonomics, huh? That's I like right. That. He was a finance major at St. John's, so. Economics, Faganomics. He told us yesterday he's not used the finance degree at all yet. He wants to be a bowler. That's his full-time profession. But nice to have a degree to fall back on for sure. A little high there, Chris, and a split. Well, it looks like he just went, he went after all of this one here. It looked a lot like the shot before, but uh, that right lane's got him crossed up on both. Now he's trying to make it hook back on the right lane. Left lane, it overhooks a little bit then. Duke's strategy's paying off. Split numbers, Randy, four out of 20 so far. He's got to get the ball to the left side of the fork and slide it over. Very makeable for the professionals. But he can't do it. And the nine stands for Michael Fagan. A second open frame. Look at the deficit. Balloon to 35 pins just like that. Duke to the seventh frame now, working on a spare. And if the door was open before, Chris, with the early open in the second frame from Fagan, it's now wide open for Norm Duke. Well, they've just about put a wedge in it now, so it can't shut. <laughs> had some help across the deck with a scout there for the 10 pin just needs that single pin conversion to stay clean now since 2000 guys he has made 31 TV appearances how about that he's tied for third with Ryan Schaefer who has more Walter Ray has got 41 and a guy named Chris Barnes has 40 not bad CB <laughs> Tremendous experience, look at that, since the year 2000. The great Walter A. Williams Jr. now the Denny's PBA Tour title. Record holder at 42. It's a lot of TV, Chris. Well, not enough wins on there, but I'm glad to be making some appearances. Well, you gotta be on TV to win it. That's pretty hard in this sport. There's Norm with a strike. As he edges toward a win here in the stepladder format, they're trying to climb the ladder. And get to the three seed, Joe Ciccone, Tommy DeLutz Jr., back on TV, first time since January of 04, nearly three years after a wrist injury has sidelined him. He's a two seed. Ryan Schaefer, our number one seed from Elmira, New York. It's been a long stretch for Ryan, not winning. So history will be made today. The light mixer hit there. The paralyzer goes down, and Fagan a strike. Mike Fagan can strike out for 214. Right now, Norm is going at a 218 clip, meaning he spares and strikes ninth and 10th. So Michael Fagan's only chance is to keep striking and hope that Norm runs into some trouble. Pretty good year for Michael Fagan, but he must be very disappointed in front of the home crowd to Walter here against Norm Duke. And a double wood. The 2 8, and he just, Chris, has not been able to find a clear path to the pocket on either lane. Yeah, he didn't like this from the beginning. This one's off his hand, and, and it's a makeup shot from the last one where he caught a whole handful of it. This one gets a little bit firmer, it gets past the spot. Uh, it's pretty much living in my world from this week <laughs> right now. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> Takes care of the double wood nicely and does cover for a spare. He does a lot of his bowling practice at Farmingdale Lanes on the island, not far from here, where he told us that the staff there will let him do what he wants with the oil machine so he can simulate the PBA patterns. Well, Michael has probably become more versatile uh, on a percentage basis than anyone else on tour this year, even more than Wes Milan. Probably more so than West Milan, although Wes is certainly seeing much better, more results. Let me ask you a question now, Chris. Norm gets up in the 10th frame. The match is basically all but over. Does Norm now experiment? Does he move to the inside? Does he look for something else? Or do you think where he's at is good enough to win another match? I think he feels like that outside is just getting better and better for him. I think he's going to get firmer. 
and use that to his advantage and get that spot uh, that he's burning up and use that as his hook and just freeze it in there more. He is locked in at the moment, and he'll be right back up against Joe Ciccone from Buffalo, New York, who has never won a Denny's PBA Tour title, making his first show of the season. Now, this is interesting. This is our ninth event of the year, Chris. We've had eight different winners so far. If Norm does take the championship, it'll be the first two-time winner of the season. Yeah, he's still got a long ways to go, though, and he's got three guys that are great at playing in, and they should just get better and better as the as the show goes on from in there. We shall see what strategy Norm takes in the next match. So the week will end here for Michael Fagan, who on Friday in the positioning rounds, the stepladder format took care of Patrick Healy Jr. It was a raucous house here on the island with all of his family and friends here. A couple hundred were rooting for Michael. It was awfully emotional that day. Just like I said, he moves in and tries the big wheel from in. Come on. Come on, give me, a little, a, uh, give me a little kudos <laughs> there, yeah. buddy. Thank you. Now, I'm and not saying he's going to move in, because he just shot 240 from out. Right. But he's but still he, looked at. He does experiment. He's a different ball there. How many games do you think Norm can get from the out? As long as his hold stays there, he can stay there all day, and nobody else is out there to challenge him. It's a, it's a really good question. As long as the his hold, as long as his mistake area to the left stays put, and he can continually miss left, and the ball holds its line, he can stay there all day. Disappointing end for Michael Fagan from right here on Long Island, but always a crowd favorite, no matter where he bowls. Norm Duke, you can hear the Duke cheers. And Norm has won here on the island before. Joe Ciccone of Buffalo is next up. Step ladder, trying to get to the top seed. Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, New York. Joe Ciccone has never won the Denny's PBA Tour. He's got to take on a legend in Norm Duke, who's won 24 times. It's the next match, coming up. Hello and a special thanks to Phil Cardinal, Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Columbia Industries. Columbia title sponsor of our great event today here on Long Island. Step ladder bracket update for you. Michael Fagan has fallen to Norm Duke, our ESPN broadcaster and now star bowler. He's already won once on tour. He takes on Joe Ciccone next. The Lutz Jr. and Schaefer awaits the winner. The PBA is mourning the loss of Cecil Cadell who passed away recently in Dallas, Texas. Cadell served as the PBA Southwest Region Director from 1971 until 1996 and was instrumental in helping to develop the regional program into what it is today. The PBA sends its deepest sympathies to the Cadell family. Second match, here's Norm, he's outside again. And he's got a strike. So Chris, he's staying there. Yeah, I would expect him to stay there for about one more game. I think the guys will eventually take that away from him by where their ball goes out to on the lane. I think it's gonna take away his left eventually. But it might be almost the second game before those ball pass go down and start to move that oil away from his hold line that Randy was talking about. Good to see Joe's folks here from Buffalo. They've made the trip. Originally from Skinny Atlas, New York, near Syracuse. And a 10 pin. These folks are in the Skinny Atlas area still. Clarify that. Joe has moved to Buffalo. And this guy here, Joe Ciccone, is quietly becoming one of the better players out here on the Denny's PBA Tour. He's learned to be versatile. He's learned how to play on all the patterns. And he's... He's a diehard practicer, a historian of the game, and he's really coming into his own. And a force to be reckoned with, I think, Chris. Yeah, you know, he's a two-time collegiate bowler of the year. This guy has some credentials. He didn't come from in from just nowhere. Uh, he practices hard out here. He's worked really hard on getting better at, at the things that work here on tour, and it's paying off. He's consistently been a, a good finisher and solid week in, week out. Chris, a four-time All-American in college, two years at Erie Community College in New York State, Two years at Arizona State, out in Tempe. 
rookie of the year on the PBA Tour in 2000. He's won seven regional titles, but never on the big tour. Maybe that changes today. No help on number 10. Two pretty good shots to start with, Chris, and ring 10 and then the little half pocket there. But the good sign, I think, is that he w actually went light on the left line. I think the left line hooks more than the right. No, I think you're absolutely right. And it looks like, I like his look better than Michael's, Michael Fagan so far. Why? Uh, because he's a little bit closer to the head pick. Uh, Michael, Michael's look was based off speed. Adrenaline's running three. It's so hard to get soft enough like you talked about, especially with his high backswing. He threw it past the break point two or three times. It was so sensitive this week. It's, it was just really easy to do. And I like Joe's look, his break point is closer to him, and he's going to control the pocket better. Second show of the year, Norm Duke. Tries to take over ninth place by himself on the title list. He'll do it with strikes like that. Great start for him with a double. He would surpass his buddy Brian Voss for ninth all time by himself. Ace hardware matchup. Well, Randy, very similar to the first one. <laughs> no titles for Joe Ciccone trying to break through today. Yeah, it's like a carbon copy. But you know what? Joe, he has some TV experience. He was in a title match in Chicago last season, but he eventually lost to Norm Duke. He's got some a lot of confidence, but that's a future PBA Hall of Famer right here. Somehow the four pin wobbles but does not fall. It was Jason Couch he lost to to Joe C in the finals last year. 217-204. Ultimately left a 4-6-7 split in the night. That was a tough break for him. And all of a sudden now, we're starting to see a little bit of what you talked about, Chris, and that pulled area may start to go away. Or is it a question of Norm just having to bump it in a little bit? I really think for now he just has to bump it in a little bit. I think that breakdown right there is his own doing from all the dole balls earlier and by just repeatedly hitting the same spot in the first game. Chris talking about the long practice before the show today, a lot of surface that Norm Duke was using high friction ball to carve his path to the pocket, keep the others away, going from outside in. The others are going to play inside out here. See how far left Joe Ciccone is. And that's a perfect shot, 1-3 pocket. So Randy, we have the interesting matchup again of the different strategies. Well, and, and we kind of knew this was going to happen if Norm could find a home out, and he, he has. But Joe made this inside look pretty good and Chris you were especially impressed with what Joe did this week because well because when we talked about it, Joe doesn't have nearly as much tilt as the rest of the guys his ball tends to reach sooner on the lane and all week long the guys who rolled it more and were a little bit firm with their speed didn't have very much luck uh, I was stunned by how well he bowled and how good his matchup was and I I like I think he just bowled fantastic actually because his physical game matchups not as good double wood very much like we saw from Michael Fagan in one of his frames in that first match. And Joe muttering to himself, trying to figure out what he needs to do here, Chris. Well, this one just looked like it was a little bit firm. It goes it goes another three or four feet longer. And Chris, when you talk about tilt, what exactly do you mean by tilt? And when I'm talking about tilt, I'm talking about end over end as opposed to more, uh, you know, side. Like a Pete Weber has a lot of tilt. A lot of side roll. Yeah. A lot of side roll where a norm when you watch him his ball is very in over and right now just tumbling down the lane. Two eight double wood takes care of it nicely covers the spare. Joe has gone 126 events without a title in his career, the fifth longest drought of active bowlers. Brian Leclerc has the record by a long shot, 344 and counting. As Connie and Jim have made the trip from Central New York, and hopefully see a good result here for their son. They started bowling at the age of two up in the Syracuse area. Norm Duke has other ideas. And one of the adjustments that Norm makes from out there is when he starts to see his ball go a little high, he's got another gear he can switch into. Can get a rack here? Meaning ball speed as he takes a re-rack on the left lane. He's got, he got, he's got some more gears that, that he can uh, really step it up to in terms of ball speed. 
All right, guys, coming up after the holiday break, where are we? Reno, Nevada, H&R Block Classic. One o'clock Eastern time. We go from East Coast way out west. Going to be back in Reno. First time since 2004. National Bowling Stadium. Guys like Walter Williams Jr., Mika Kuebu, Miami have won titles there. Back in 04, back-to-back -back events we had. All 10 down for Norm Duke. But just like you said, Randy, he kicked it up a gear. He didn't really move left up the four pin. He just amped up the speed a little. I'll tell you what, the most winningest player in the history of the tour throws the ball pretty straight. Norm is versatile. He can hook it, he can go straight, but his, his bread and butter is going straight. He's got that I just confident look in his eye, guys. I just don't understand why more players don't try to do what these guys are doing. When I think that's what has changed the most about the young guys right now. You watch a Wes Malad who's getting much better at playing straight. You watch Michael Fagan, whose straight game has gotten much, much better out here. And all the young guys are learning how to do it at a younger age because of the match play format. When you go head to head, you have to do that or you can't keep up with Norm Walter in the, in the group. It's been our theme all year long. Young guns like Joe Ciccone. Trying to win his first ever title. Michael Fagan, his bid for a first championship will fall short today. Against the likes of the legends like Walter Ray, Parker Bohm III has made several shows. Walter Ray has a title, Japan Cup, to set the record. Norm's already won once on tour. Be the first two-time winner if he can take this championship today. Our big theme as we wrap up the first half of the season. Holiday break coming. January 7th, we resume in Nevada. Norm's sitting there trying to exercise the demons <laughs> and just keep doing what he's doing, boy. He's giving Joe Ciccone all he wants right now. There's a strike for Joe Ciccone, who is in the National Junior College Athletic <laughs> Association Hall of Fame. He's had a fine year, 13th in the PBA rankings. A lot of accolades, but still no title. At least he could smile about it. <laughs> He's down 21 pins to the legend, Norm Du. They're climbing the ladder, trying to get to the top seed, Ryan Schaefer. Tommy Deluce Jr. also awaits the winner of this match. With Carson Palmer and Chad Johnson, Cincinnati's one of the AFC's hottest teams making a playoff push. They visit the top pass-catching combo in the NFL. Manning and Marvin try to jumpstart the Colts. What happens when the Bengals visit the Colts? At 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. All right, Mike Tirico, we look forward to that. How about tonight? College Hoops on ESPN continues. Colin Sampson in Indiana's new team. Sunday showdown presented by Altel Wireless. Part of the holiday hoops presented by K Jewelers on ESPN. Tonight, 8 Eastern against Southern Illinois. Southern 7-1. Indiana under Coach Sampson, 5-3 this year. DJ White, their leading scorer. So the Big Ten against Southern Illinois. Tonight, Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's college basketball here on ESPN. And our director, Scott Katz, is an uh, Indiana alum, and oh. you know he'll be rooting for the Hoosiers. Will he ever? Here it's match number two. Step ladder format, trying to get to Tommy Lutz Jr. The two seed, Ryan Schaefer, the top seed. Norm Duke, big lead. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just looks so simple. And, and I mean, Norm has just created something that none of the other players have and right now it looks like the only player that's going to beat Norm Duke is Norm Duke. He's still outside, <laughs> fellas. And this wow. is one of the things that makes Walter Ray so great too is he just doesn't beat himself. I mean that the carry angle is not fantastic, but it's awfully good and he just hits the pocket every shot and you have to bowl a great game to beat him. Chance for a 41 pin lead. You bet. For Bagger, Norm Duke expands the lead here. And it's interesting, after the great season he had last year, seven TV shows, that's the PBA Tour best. He led the tour in shows, points, and average. Second to Tommy Jones for Player of the Year honors. But he thinks it was disappointing, Chris, because he just had the one title last year. Well, and that ultimately is how we're all judged by. So understand that the worst feeling out here is to make a show and to lose on TV. It feels worse than bowling bad through the whole week. It's, it's just the worst thing that we have out here. God, fucking kidding me. <laughs> he just cannot find the pocket. Another high shot. And like Michael Vick, Joe Ciccone can't seem to be able to put his finger on why he can't strike enough. 
this is the problem for the guys that rolled it most of the week. You have the four pin look, you move off of it, it goes light, you get the can opener, it gets a strike, but they just made it awful hard. Randy, who do you think has the best type of ball roll for this pattern? Well, hang on a minute, I'll get to that in a second, but look at what Joe Ciccone did last week. He qualified second this week. Ended up being the third seed, and Joe said it feels like, or he feels real good about what he's doing leading up, into the, leading up to the first half of the season. But getting back to what you just said, I think the guys that have the best look on this pattern are Ryan Schaefer, Patrick Healy Jr., and Pete Weber. And Pete Weber was the last one to win on this pattern. And I think it's all because of their ball rotation. After Fomac's weekly update, Joe Ciccone has finally found the path to the pocket he wanted, but he knows it's going to be too late now, down by 41 pins. And Norm Duke, four bagger here, eighth frame, unless he completely collapses. He will move up the ladder. He loves the format. He loves getting a lot of games in. The momentum we talked about, a huge factor why the top seed has not won in two years. Good step ladder play. Oh, for the last eight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my, oh my. Copy. Just a repeat shot after shot. And he makes it look easy, but let me tell you something. If you don't do this and you don't practice or work at doing something like this, it's not easy. That hand position is in a good spot each and every time. His ball speed is just a mirror image, like Dave just said. It takes a lot of talent to be able to do that shot after shot. This is what he did in Hammond earlier this year. Went out there and played out and, and just made them look walled up. And they're, they're really not very easy playing them like that. And he gets in such a good rhythm. It's just pure stroke right there. Even the light shots turn into head pin back across to slap the 10. That was Hammond, Indiana, where Norm won his 24th career title. Chris, you were with us in the booth for that one. Mika Kova Niemi made the final of that show. Steve Rogers and Michael Haugen Jr. also in that broadcast. And Norm made history that week, first ever bowler to go 14-0 all the way through match play on route to the title. Randy, you went 12-0 along with Chris Hayden, but not 14. Pretty impressive, right. all those numbers. <laughs> Randy's last title, Philadelphia. Chris Hayden back in Orlando a few years ago. Hey, Dave, you remember who I beat for the title there in Philly? Chris Barnes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You had the All-American look going that <laughs> day. Speaking of the Michael Chris? Vick thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what a setup that was. <laughs> oh, my. Well, well now, uh, one thing that I wanted to point out was, Chris, you see how intense Norm is this early, this at this stage of this uh, TV finals? I mean, he still has two more matches to win, but, I mean, he looks right now like this tournament's over. I mean, he's got that demeanor. He's running him out. He's pumped up. He still has two games to bowl. Yeah, I'm a little surprised because he's, he's really good at pacing himself and keeping his emotions in check. And the one thing you really have to do when you're being that nice to it at the bottom is you have to keep your emotional level down so that you don't yip on one. So that you don't overthrow or get too amped up. Yeah. Well, guys, Joe Giacconi will see the first half of his season end in disappointment without a win. He really wanted to deliver and get his first victory here today. He felt that really would have capped off. A good first half for him, top 15 in rankings. He plans to drive back to Buffalo, a couple days there, and then he's driving out to Reno to keep the car on the road with him. It's going to be a three-day trip to get to Nevada. And maybe taking a Sabres game in Buffalo, and that's how he'll spend his Christmas break before the second swing starts. There's Norm finishing up this one. It's all over, Norm Duke. To the next round, he'll take on Tommy Deluce Jr. in the third match, and there's Tommy from nearby Queens, New York City, another hometown favorite. Chris, what do you think? Do you think Tommy Deluce Jr. jumps outside and tries to get on the Norm Duke bandwagon? I don't think so, although Frank by watching the first two matches, the right lane hasn't looked all that good. If he can figure out that right lane, he'll play in. If not, I think he may jump out with Tommy. Or with there's with there's the top seed guys, Ryan Schaefer, also set for some practice. They are carefully watching where Norm is going. Sees way inside here for a practice shot, perhaps. Get a feel for that look. And this one is over. The man with a lot of options. Where will he go for the next match? Tommy DeLuce Jr. 
awaits the number two seed. All smiles for now for the legend Norm Duke for good reason. How about Tommy DeLuke Jr. overcoming a severe wrist injury, torn tendon, nearly ended his career, hasn't been on TV in nearly three years, hasn't won since 2001. He returns to TV when we come back to the island. The Columbia 300 Classic is brought to you by Bear. The more you know, the more you trust Bear. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com. And by Columbia 300, the official PBA supplier of high performance bowling balls. Columbia bowls the world over. This is the 32nd time PBA Tour has visited Long Island, third at AMF Babylon Lane. Norm Duke, Tommy Lutz Jr. next in the step ladder format. Randy, let's check in with the Atonic Edge for this week. Okay. Well, this is all about Norm Duke. Speaking of the Atonic Edge, he's playing the edge. Norm Duke is averaging 255 for his first two games while his opponents are averaging 190. What a moment this must be, guys, for Tommy Lutz Jr. Back on TV for the first time since January 2004, Medford, Oregon. Norm Duke has been red hot. Smashing two opponents so far. And there's a four pin. Looks like he used a little too much brush on that shoe there. Yeah, because when you take a wire brush to, your, to the sole of your shoe, Chris, it, it roughs up the surface and it does make you slow down particularly on the heel, you're, you're knocking off some of the buildup, which actually helps you slide a little bit. Looks like you knocked off a little bit of it and hit the brakes hard. Yeah. Again. Has a single oh, pin spare conversion. And he hopes for multiple titles for the first time since 99. How about it? From nearby Flushing, Queens, New York City, Tommy DeLutz Jr., big New York Mets fan. With Darlene, his mom watching, this just must be some kind of moment for him. He's back on TV for the 10 pin. You're right, Dave. It really is. This is a good thing. This is really nice to see Tommy D back and 16 months off of the tour, just barely holding on to his card last season. But I'll tell you what, had a little bit of a, a back thing going on the first couple of events this season and ever since then. I mean, it's been red hot. Had some acupuncture done on that. As he was bothered by the back in October, missed the first two events of the year. Ace Hardware matchup, Chris, let's break it down here. Tommy DeLutz Jr. on TV for the first time in so long. What are the jitters like for him right now? Well, he spoke about the first three shots when he comes out. He's pretty nervous, he gets pretty amped up, and then he settles into a groove. Right now, these are two of the hottest bowlers on tour. One of them we've seen every week with Norm. Tommy's been much quieter about it, but he is building his way up to this moment right now. He's had a nice season. Several top 10 finishes coming off a shredded tendon in his wrist. It was a disastrous injury. Couldn't hold a bowling ball. Has 10 down there. Reconstructive surgery essentially cost him a year and a half between the rehab and trying to come back. And then with just a couple of weeks left in the tour season last year, was able to qualify high enough with the numbers and the rankings, Randy, to make the exempt list this year. It's been a long road for Tommy. Long, tough road, and like I said at the top of the show, any any athlete that goes through injuries and rehab, it takes its toll on you. The, the unknown of never knowing whether or not you'll be able to come back and compete at this level is very, very tough mentally. Still outside and still in the pocket is Norm Duke, who himself has overcome Pinch nerve issues in his neck and back problems. And we talked about Tommy's great year, Chris. He really has a quietly had an outstanding season. Well, Rainey alluded to it earlier. He has five top tens in a row. Four of them are top eights now. It, it's awful tough to do week in, week out with the varying patterns, varying distances, the left to right differences, and the different guys that are good on specific patterns to be that good every single week. All 10 down again for Norm Duke. And Tommy DeLutz, his last win came in 2001. Now, it was on a Long Island event 
everything except the TV show on the island. That was at the Mohegan Sun Resort Casino Arena in Connecticut. Well, before Randy runs me over on that one, too, he beat me for that title. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but since you did, yeah, he did. <laughs> that was back in 01 for his championship. Since then, though, Tommy one and five in his last six TV matches. In all fairness, though, his last show, which was in Medford, he bowled a fantastic game, had the double in the 10th. I think it's the first one. The second one, he throws it perfect for a ring 10, and Pete wins that title. Mm. Won at 265, 256, January 18th, 2004, after defeating Brad Angelo in the first match. Last time Tommy was on TV, there's a 10 pin for Tommy DeLutz Jr. Figure it out. He's ranked 11th on the tour this year. You see Doug Kent, a couple of bowlers who had thoughts about not coming back this year. Doug Kent runs two bowling centers in the Syracuse, New York area, upstate. Look at the big change for them. Doug, of course, won the Masters to begin the season. Two-season exemption and $100,000 as well. I think if we'd all known Doug was thinking about it that hard, we might have played some phone calls and helped him along. <laughs> I could have moved up a spot. Yeah, Doug, I think you should really stay home. Yes. All 10 down for the local hero, Tommy DeLutz Jr. But how about the bowlers who are not doing so well? Mike Machuga withdrew, didn't bowl this week here on the island. And Patrick Allen, past player of the year, 36th in the rankings. Wow. So how the mighty have fallen, Chris, when it comes to PA. Well, it seems like on the left, they're much tighter this year, and, uh, and Patrick made some changes he's trying to adjust to what's going on but he's just struggling his confidence is really off uh, michael's got a tremendous physical game and and he's just been a little bit out of sorts it won't be long though for either two of these you know these guys are back on top no left-handers have won so far this year chris eight events all righties norm duke trying to continue that trend all right-handers here today on this show. Five-man step ladder bowling. It only seems like a perfect show. <laughs> that was Chris Barnes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Chris Just Barnes. to clarify. Just to clarify. Norm trying to stay hot. There's a 10 pin. Just a joke, guys. Just a <laughs> joke. <laughs> the righty-lefty <laughs> rivalry rolls on uh, here. God, I can't wait to. See the amount of hate mail you get next week, pal. Slump in with the rest. <laughs> now Jason Couch has been in the booth with us. We can bring him back here. We got an extra headset and have him uh, give the lefties perspective. There's a 10 pin for Norm. Well, this right lane has been uh, kind of a bugaboo <clears throat> for Tommy Deluce. Two week tens back to back on this very lane, left lane. He's perfect. What does he do? What adjustment does he make on this right lane, Chris? Well, there's basically what three options. I guess he he can get a little softer on it. He can use more tilt. He can make a lateral move to the right. Uh, the lateral moves to the right I don't think are working so well. I think he needs to get a little bit softer with the speed and give it time. Trying to cut it to nine. He'll do just that. Perfect shot, Tommy DeLuke Jr., who deferred his exemption for an entire season after the injury. 0405 last season barely made the exempt list because most of his year was spent rehabbing and getting his wrist back into shape. And then he's finally healthy. What happens to the former All-American from William Patterson College in New Jersey? Pinch nerve in his back to begin the year. Acupuncture, other treatment needed, Randy, to get back healthy again. Yeah, last season he actually clinched his exemption the last week because he took Tom Baker to a seven game match. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly a split. Four pin Long and he lane. could have taken a lead. And he really wanted that one because that, like you said, Dave, that would have given him the lead. Last time we saw a hit like that, Michael Pagan leads a four nine. He only leads a four pin. <laughs> the other reason he really wanted that, because if that one holds there, it's, it's on. He can keep up now. There's the four pin for a bowler's not won in 78 events. 
part of the New York contingent here, making PBA history. First time ever, four bowlers from New York have appeared on one show. Last time it happened, 04 Medford, who was on that show? Tommy Deleuze Jr., along with Brad Angelo and Ryan Schaefer, who's our top seed. Step Ladder Bowling continues next. Let's go on the road with an NA's PBA Tour. It's going to be after the holiday season, folks, after the new year. First event, second part of our season, National Bowling Stadium in Reno. And log on to PBA.com, ticket information for the Pro-Am, the site of the best ever bowling movie filmed, Kingpin. That is correct. And I Starring can't Randy Peters. Well, I, I don't know <laughs> if I would say starring, but well. I can't believe that that movie didn't win an Oscar. I'm sorry. Or at least your part. Come on. <laughs> Here's Norm. Oh. There's an eight pin for Norm My. Duke. Out of the commercial break, had a 10 pin lead. That's not very friendly. But the good news is he was on a spare because when you're on a strike and you go stone eight, doesn't make you very happy. What's really impressive to me is how good Norm has been out of the commercial break. I mean, it's really the hardest shot to throw after you've been sitting down for two and a half minutes, there's no practice balls in between, get up and get right back into rhythm. It's so important. Speaking of rhythm, didn't like what he saw there, so he'll step back and then nail the eight pin for a single pin spare to keep clean. We've got a great match in our hands, third match of the day already for Norm Duke. And Chris, there's a breakdown left and right lane. Well, he hasn't had nearly the trouble that everyone else has. Uh, the right lane has been everybody's problem and he keeps striking on the right lane and, and that's where he picks up all his pins. Well, call it what you will, that man right there is the Zen master of the hardwood, and he's proven it today. Oh, how did that pin not go down? If Phil Jackson is listening, he might take exception. I didn't mean hardwood in, in basketball. <laughs> I, you know, no. there was a time when the woods were made out of maple, and that's a pretty hard wood. Now they're made out of synthetic, so he's the Zen master of the synthetics. He's the Zen master of playing out. That I can is tell you that. Definition of the paralyzer, guys. How did the five not drop? It was slapped silly. Didn't know which way to fall. It shifted, just didn't fall. And there's another spare, but the door is slightly ajar here, Chris, for Tommy DeLutz Jr. with a strong finish. Well, certainly more opportunity than he's given any of his other opponents, and Tommy's also hung around better than any of the other ones, too. Tommy can actually strike out and win this. I'm going at 247. Tommy DeLutz Jr. can shoot 249. 10 pin. Well, the bowler who told us last night he's lost nearly two and a half years of his career, prime years, because of the wrist injury. Pretty good shot here, Chris. And I mean, that ball's starting to make the turn and, and behave properly on the right lane. Tommy knew that he made the proper adjustment. He just doesn't get the pins to cooperate. Careful. Side of the pin, he'll take it. Careful's right, Tommy. He's a huge New York Mets fan. Joking with us last night when you drive by Shea Stadium on the Grand Central Parkway, you can see the opening from the outfield. He said if you look hard enough, you might still see Carlos Beltran with a bat in his shoulder. Yeah, Struck I mean, out by Wayne right there to end the NLCS. I mean, it's one thing to be sitting at home <laughs> rehabbing, but to sit at home and rehab and have to, have to watch your beloved Mets oh, lose in that fashion. Huge I mean, Mets fan. It's kind of tough to swallow. Unless you're a Cardinal fan. <laughs> All 10 down for the local hero, Tommy DeLutz Jr. Well, we still have a match, obviously, and this is going to come down to who wants it more and who wills those corner pins over because nobody has gotten less than nine on any shot. There hasn't been a ball out of the pocket in this match. And right now, Norm controls his own destiny. Striking out, he'll be in the 240s, and he will shut out Tommy DeLutz Jr. Strike. That was for pure. Norm. That was yours. That's money there. Speaking of money, Doug Kent is the leader on tour. Great transition there, Randy. Thank you, sir. Norm Duke is eighth 
along with Ryan Schaefer right behind him, two bowers on this show. Pete Weber took the week off, as did Walter Williams Jr. getting a head start on the holiday break. Tommy Jones won his ninth career title earlier this season. That was in Cleveland, and he sits in the sixth spot. Very own Tony Rance on his first title is number seven. Mr. 300. Mm -hmm. Huge. Wow, what a late help and hit on the seventh pin, helping Norm Duke out big time. Well, that's a big lane for him. This lane hooks a little bit sooner, but it's flatter down lane. You watch this time. Last time he paralyzed the five. This time it shoots across, slams the seven. Yeah, and with that strike there, he can't be shut out. If he doesn't strike in the ninth frame, Tommy could have struck out ninth and tenth and steal this match away. All right, guys, foundation plan. Cut it to nine. Big shot. Seven pin. No luck for Tommy DeLuch Jr. He's hit the pocket. He's made some great shots. And the pins have not fallen for him. Every ball in the pocket, it's either a weak 10, ring and 10, or a shaker seven now. Takes care of the seven pin against Norm. He was three and one heading in on TV in his career, averaging more than 221 per Sorry. game. Won two titles, 99 Lakewood, California. And we talked about the Long Island Open back in 01. That long with Tommy DeLutz. Well, three strikes in the tenth here. He makes Norm show up and mark in the tenth. Anything else, Norm just has to keep it on the lane. Ten pin. Every break has not gone his way, and it's spelled disaster for Deluxe Jr. Yeah, it's easy to look back. It's you know 2020 hindsight, but it looks like he's just overshelled a little bit. His ball rolls also a little bit too close to him. The ball's going through the pins a little bit flatter than it needs to, and uh, you know it's costing him corners and it's on both sides, and it's just devastating. Well, a pretty good game for 2-0. But you're right, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world, and that's part of being a great player out here is making that determination. Yeah, a lot of times it's a guess, but it's an, educa it's an educated guess. And through experience and knowledge, you make the right guesses more times than not. Yeah, best <laughs> <good. laughs> Ex execution is one part, but you have to make great decisions. Tommy bids farewell to the hometown crowd here. He's from Queens, New York City, about 30 miles away, and that's what Norm needs. Originally from East Texas, now Claremont, Florida. Norm Duke. How about nine? How about a stone nine? <laughs> <laughs> and Norm's going through all the New Yorkers. It's, I wonder if it's one of those things where, you know, because when the New Yorkers move, they move to Florida. <laughs> Norm lives in Florida. Usually. Good place to go. He'll take on Ryan Schaefer, the last standing New Yorker, who is the top seed. Can the top seed finally win a step ladder final? It's been eight straight over two seasons. Four this year, four last year. Ofer for the top seed in the last eight to try to win as the number one ranked player going into the show. Norm Duke has other ideas. Looking for his second title of the year, 25th of his career, and it would put a stronghold on the player of the year race. I know it's early, three majors to go in the second half of the season, but he'd be the first to win to his opponent. Next, the top seed, Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, New York. Norm needs a break. He'll come back and go for a title. Ryan Schaefer has won four times. One of the best on tour in terms of mechanics, but he needs to come through for the big win today. We find out if he can next. Happy holidays from all of us at the Denny's PBA Tour and ESPN Live coverage. Columbia 300 Classic continues. There's Mike Saragano, GM of AMF Babylon Lanes. We thank he and his staff for a great job all week in hosting this event. There's Norm Duke.
He is to the final against Ryan Schaefer, leading us to the GEICO Championship recap. Randy? All right, Dave. Well, in match number one, Norm Duke defeated Michael Fagan by the score of 248 to 184. Fagan opened early. He could never get back on track, losing to the future PBA Hall of Famer. Match number two, Norm Duke defeated Joe Ciccone by the score of 257 to 206. Norm continues to dominate from the outside part of the lane. And in match number three, Norm Duke defeats Tommy Deluce Jr. by the score of 226 to 207. Norm beating three New Yorkers on his way to the championship match in the 2006 Columbia 300 Classic. That's the Geico Championship recap. Coming up next, Norm Duke, Ryan Schaefer. Can the top seed finally win, or will Norm win his 25th title? Covers Denny's PBA Tour. Our last event before the holiday season takes us on a two week break. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, Chris Barnes off lane in the broadcast booth because Norm Duke is on the show. And Norm has rolled through three competitors so far, all of whom are from the great state of New York. Last chance for the Empire Staters here. It's Ryan Schaefer, top seed. Dave, you're from New York. Syracuse. I am. I am. Thank Man, you, you think. <laughs> I think I'd know that after this long, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Norm tried to pull him the wrong lane. Wow. So far, Fagan, Ciccone, Deluxe Jr. have gone down, and Norm Duke, who started as the fourth seed. One more, and he climbs the ladder for a title. <laughs> Ten pin. That's the one thing that Norm doesn't want to see is a weak 10. Especially when his eyes get real big like that, like he thinks he just cured it and he goes weak 10. Yeah, the key lane for Ryan is going to be the right lane. That's the lane that's been tighter down lane for everybody playing in. They have a hard time getting the six pin out of the flat gutter to hit the 10. For Norm, it's going to be the left lane. His ball is hooking a little bit earlier on that lane. Gets a little flatter through the pins. He can kick out the 10 on that one. It's money in the bank. And Dave, Ryan Schaefer is our number one seed. He gets choice of what lane he starts and finishes on. And he chose to have Norm start the match, which makes Ryan Schaefer finish on the left lane. And it's Michelle, his wife, to watch again. She was with us in Cleveland a couple weeks back. The event eventually won by Tommy Jones, but Ryan made that show as well. Oh, my God. Oh, man, he just didn't like that at all. And... Count. What happened, Chris? This is just a pitch out. We talked about it earlier at, the, at board eight at the break point. It's out of bounds. This one gets there and it's just accelerates from that spot. Yeah, picked up speed like it was going downhill. Oh, that could be even worse, fellas, than just a six pin count. Disastrous start for Schaefer. Again, it's the top seed. The big theme of our broadcast today. Can the top seed finally win? It's Ryan. The row for the last eight over the two seasons combined. And he does nicely cover, leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup. Norm Duke trying to go all the way, Randy, and run the table in the stepladder format. Well, Norm Duke's going to have his hands full with the Bulldog Ryan Schaefer. Schaefer's got lots of TV experience. The only thing lacking in Ryan's resume is wins. I mean, that's it. Millionaire, made all the shows, just needs more wins to get on that same level. Four titles, last game, Empire State Open, 03. And a one-pin victory. And guess who he beat? Oh, right, yeah. Ten pin. Chris Barnes. Well, it's just kind of getting comfortable like we <laughs> talked about earlier. That's called a few times today. <laughs> Sorry, just, partner. You're yeah. just throwing that up there in the air? Or, uh, uh, okay, Chris, go ahead. Ten pin. That's a f another flat ten. You had a flat tim from a guy that throws it straight and a flat tim from a guy that hooks it both on the same leg. I think this is just an adrenaline one. You come out, you haven't been on TV for a while, you, you're pumped up. It'll d take a couple of shots for him to settle down, and from here on, I think you'll get a lot better. So can the top seed finally do it? Chris, we talked about that top of the broadcast. There have been many 
different philosophies from these different top seeds. We asked all the bowlers about it. I thought Michael Fagan's answer was interesting. That sometimes you have a strategy throughout the week, and you carry that into your one game on TV, and it may not be the right call. Sure, that's happened to lots of guys. The other thing that happens is there's a long break in between the last two matches, and the guy that just won gets extra practice that normally doesn't happen between matches. Interestingly, though, Norm didn't throw any shots in between. He didn't take advantage of any of that. Yeah, it looked like Norm <laughs> went, uh, went off the set and took a break during the commercial, didn't throw one shot, comes back, and it's flat 10, ring and 10. And I think this, this match here is all about Norm being able to maintain the same focus and mentally stay in the same place. Don't get jacked up, don't get over over anxious, don't Amazing. get too enthused or, or too enthusiastic about it. You gotta stay in that same place that he's been at for three games. That same place meaning mentally. This one I think Norm is gonna have to be Norm. You know, and what I mean by that is that he's gonna have to be that Hall of Famer. His look is going away. It's not it's not really two fifty right now. He's gonna have to will it into a 220, 230, 240 game, and whether that's enough to beat the voodoo roll <laughs> that Schaefer's gonna need on that right lane to strike. Schaefer's got the voodoo. Here's a strike first of this championship match for Norm Duke. See other finishers here at the Columbia 300 Classic. We should mention that Kelly Kulik, who was the first female ever to get the full season exemption, not on that list. Twice she made match play guys in the first half of the season at the Masters and in Cleveland. It's been quite a first half for Kelly Kulik. It's been tough. She's had to adjust all the different transitions and everything going on. It's been hard on her. Right right around, the right lane. Wheel that into the 1-3 pocket, and it barely got there. That's the Ryan Schaefer signature move there, Dave. He kind of turns that wheel a little bit, and then his ball normally goes sideways when he does that. That voodoo roll. He does have a lot more side roll or, or more axis tilt, a lot of rotation, a lot of side roll. Almost looks like he's spinning it somewhat, but I think that's what makes him stand out from a lot of the other players out here is that different ball roll. When it works, you can't touch this guy. Exactly. He controls the mid lane, even though his tilt much di further down than most of the other guys. Yeah! 60 feet to success for Ryan Schaefer. Boy, that smashes the one three pocket. Pins everywhere. Best shot. Uh, this championship match, things are awfully close. The exciting finals coming up from Long Island. Today, Don't Norm. go away. The Columbia 300 Classic is brought to you by Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. By Atonic, the official footwear of the PBA. Atonic, first one there. By Columbia 300, the official PBA supplier of high-performance bowling balls. Columbia bowls the world over. And by prescription, Flomax. Not today, Norm. Wow, how about that? During the commercial break, Ryan Schaefer making a statement. New York state of mind here. <laughs> First, Michael Fagan went down to Norm Duke. Next, Joe Giacconi, who's from Buffalo, originally from Scanning Atlas near Syracuse. Then, Tommy Deluce Jr. from Queens, New York City. Three up, three down for Norm Duke. First time ever we've had four bowlers from New York State on one show. Last time and it happened, 04 Medford. Tommy Deluce Jr. on that show. Who else? Ryan Schaefer on that show. Norm has owned Ryan on TV. And Chris, there's a little bad blood between these two, isn't there? There was. Last year in Hammond, uh, there was some, some pretty serious gamesmanship, uh, some accusations flown. These guys got into it and really, uh, really left a little bad taste, mm. I think, in both their mouths. They want to beat each other in this one. Mm. Right now, Norm get is getting beat up by the 10 pin. Needed a strike there to stay even with Schaefer. And Schaefer made a pretty big statement there when he said, not today, Norm. It's almost like he's got the crystal ball thing going. And he made that move to the right after the first two balls that he threw from in 
Remember, he missed the head fin. He said, that's why I don't want to do that. He moves right the last two shots and goes pack, pack, and then says, not today, Norm. Almost like he got the feeling like, you know what? I found it. I got it. And Norm, you're in big trouble. Focused, so motivated. Strikes there in the fifth. Schaefer does work on a couple strikes here himself. Goes to the fifth frame, looks for the turkey. And can take a 20 pin lead on Norm Newton. He's had a fine season, eighth in the rankings, sixth in average. Third show of the year for Ryan Schaefer. Oh no! Can you believe it? It's a 7 10. Nice wow. break, huh? Makes the move, commits to it, makes a good shot here, and just gets What's nothing that? for it. Five pin gets trapped, gets in behind it. But you know, from that angle, he's got to stay firm. There's a lot of pins that have bounced out this week. Bounce it out. Didn't quite get the bounce out <laughs> from the back of the pit there, so still Jess Stayrook, 91, Tucson, Arizona, last half of 7-10 on TV. All right, this is what he did at the start of the match. Way in, he's at flat 10. He says, you know what? I'm going to make a move, and a bold move. Commits oh to it, cures it, and that's how he caught his double. But just like that, Norm Duke on the bench for pin lead now. Norm has not had anything but a strike or just a single pin spare all day to shoot at through all of his matches. That's it. Yeah. Big strike there from Schaefer. Bounces back from the open. Oh, Jesus. but the door is open now, certainly. Just one time. Ryan frustrated. Look at that. Eight in a row. Last time, Chris Barnes, you did it. 05 <laughs> U.S. Open. And the last one to do it, part of Tommy Jones, great start to the 0506 season. Won four tournaments that year and took Player of the Year honors. Ten pin. Boy, had a chance to really put some distance between he and Shane. Well, this is just a product of all those earlier shots. His ball's picking up a little sooner, and it's just he's playing shim to win. That one shimmed in a little bit too far. Six goes right around the ten. It's hard to throw it much better than that. He's got to feel a little helpless from that angle. Norm's 13th single pin spare conversion of the day. Right Isn't there. that amazing? As he climbs the ladder, three New Yorkers down already, maybe a fourth here, but the lead just four pins because he couldn't strike. In his sixth frame. Chris, you see Norm looking at the lanes. What does he do? Does he make a change? Does he stick with what he's... Does he stick with what's got him to this point? Norm's going to will this one in there. He talked about it. He's just going to have to make it happen. He's going to throw it a little firmer. He, I doubt if he'll catch it much more. I think he'll just get more direct and more at it. Which is what he does. And a big strike for Norm Duke. Last time a top seed did it. 05, we showed you Chris Barnes in a great final over Patrick Allen. Wes Malott over Chris Barnes in Chicago. Tony Reyes over Wes Malott, Taylor, Michigan. Doug Ken over Jack Jurek at the Masters. Walter Ray over Pete Weber, Japan Cup. All of those top seeds this season in stepladder play have gone down. It's amazing. Can Ryan Schaefer change that? No! God! That was high. Four just, pin. Just a pinch. Wanted to double here, looking for a little help after that pocket 7-10. No! God! The last shot goes by it a little bit. He pocket 7-10s, makes a little move off of it. It looked like it checked two feet, maybe three feet sooner on the lane. Almost had to hold up just to leave a four pin. All 
I really like the move he's made. He's moved right. He's using some of what Norm has built out there to the right. And he's the first guy to use any of that. And he's got a different angle. Certainly think it improves his chances, but his struggles seem, seem to be like everyone else's on that right lane and that carry is everything. Game one, boy, struggle has me in some of the games here. The average on this shark pattern has not been a whole lot higher. Under 200 in the tour qualifying round. Leading up to the step ladder play, round robin. Here's a big strike. All 10 down for Ryan Schaefer from Horseheads, New York, near Elmira. Hometown of the late great Ernie Davis. For a guy that is really good at hooking it from in, Ryan Schaefer showing some of his versatility. And that's about as hard as I've ever seen him throw it. He's moved right and he's piping it pretty close to the second arrow. Big shot here for Norm Duke, guys. It's the double, 14 pin lead. Has it. That is huge. That one faced up correctly. <laughs> he got a little more aggressive with it. Not only with his swing and speed, but he got a little bit more aggressive with it at the bottom and got it to roll. That one got up through him. No worries. Well, it's his first strike on the right lane, and keep in mind that when it comes down to the 10th frame, Norm Duke has to finish on that right lane. Remember Ryan had the not today Norm statement. Norm ignored him then. Now trying to let his bowling do the talking. Shots like that, he will. Has a turkey, foundation frame strike, 24 pin lead. Did you see that, Randy? Look at his arm swing. Yeah, it looks like his arm came, uh, the back swing came up a little bit higher. He's amping it up, and he said, you know what? I'm going to just bring the high, hard one, and I'm going to throw it right at the 1-3. Shim to win, baby. Back to Schaefer. Come on. Oh. <laughs> he almost had a 7-10 for the second time. Whatever. In the title match. And the deficit Unbelievable. will increase here Unbelievable. for Schaefer. Right lane got him. That's what that's what Ryan Schaefer is undoing is right there on the right lane. You know, without, a, without striking in that ninth frame, or in this ninth frame, he has virtually no chance to win this tournament. There's the seven. Norm Duke, a chance if he runs the table here to surpass Parker Bone the third for sixth in TV wins. This is unbelievable. He'll be up to 74 if he can take this one, and he's in the driver's seat right now. Last time Norm Duke won sitting on the bench, needed some help from Mika. Right now, Norm controls his own destiny. He got a lot of help from this guy right here with some bad breaks. Oh, that's way off the mark, guys. And a bad shot. As light as it can be in a washout. Yeah, this one just gets outside of that spot, that break point that we're talking about at eight. That one gets to about seven or so, and at that point it just accelerates all the way through. Just pure frustration from the right lane and the bad breaks that he got on the right lane. And All coming out in one shot. Norm and Duke Norm. is your winner. He sure is. On the bench again. Just like in Hammond, Indiana. Norm Duke. With a washout and the open from Schaefer. Needs all of one pin to wrap it up. I'm quite sure he'll get that. And how about Norm, folks? Climbs the ladder. Wins the second title of the season. Continues the extraordinary frustration of the top seeds. They'll now be 0-9 in stepladder play over the last two years. Silver anniversary win. That's a special number 25 from Norm Duke. What a fantastic performance today as he went right through the field, did his own thing, and made excellent shots all day long. Lays waste to the New York Staters. All gone. Goodbye, Empire Staters.
almost like he's saying, hey, I could have yeah. beat you from in there today, too. Shoving it in his face maybe a little bit, huh? <laughs> Norm Duke in a New York state of mind. How about it? And by himself in ninth place all time, Denny's PBA Tour title list surpassing his great buddy, Ryan Voss. Guys, what a day for Norm. Like Chris said, you know, he built something for himself, but Norm made shots. He cured it all day today, made the right adjustments, and never threw a bad shot. On the backside of the Christmas break, we'll be with you from Reno, Nevada, on the Bowling Stadium. Can't wait to see that great event, HR Block Classic on ESPN. Coverage starts after the holidays. Have a great holiday season, everyone. We'll see you for live coverage. And the new year, Norm Duke has taken it as he wins his 25th career title. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for the entire crew, Chris Barnes, Randy Peterson, Dave Ryan saying so long. Pinnacle Exceptional Driver Championship coming up next. From all of us, the Denny's PBA Tour and ESPN. Happy holidays, everyone. Enjoy your Christmas and your holiday season. Happy New Year. Norm Duke a winner.